the, the word is it is the hottest ever the garden was over 97 degrees the air conditioning's broken so danny what was what was it like going into this game or being in this game with the with the heat which everyone seems to be talking about yeah i mean it was a uh, we were used to the boston garden obviously it had it had never been as hot as it was that night and especially with all the fans in there um, but listen, we've, we've all played outside in a hundred degree temperatures and humidity and, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a game five, you know, like I didn't, I don't think it really bothered us at all. I know there was a lot of talk about it and a lot of hype on television about it, but I, we didn't really talk much about it or even think that much about it. Now, a lot of the talk becomes the Celtics pick up their physicality and that's backed up by images of Rambus going down with hard fouls. Did you guys do things, other things that were different in this game that, that really changed things? Well, I'll tell you a funny story about that hard foul on Mikhail. We're watching game three, and they're just a fast break lay-in drill. And, you know, I was a defensive balance guy because I was usually at the three-point line, so I'm running back, and I got Magic coming down the middle of the lane, and I got Worthy and Byron Scott on both sides that can touch the top of the backboard, and I'm, like, stuck in between these, and and I'm getting booed in every arena because I'm the only guy on the team that will take a hard foul. And so after the meeting, everyone's going like, we got to start fouling. Like, this is, a, this is ridiculous. We got to – and I looked at Kevin and go, like, why don't you foul somebody one time? Why don't you take a hard foul once? And uh, anyway, we sort of went back and forth, and there was a lot of bickering. But our team was not happy after game three. And, uh, and Mikhail did that. That got us kind of fi fired up, not because of a hard foul against Rambus, but it wasn't Larry who did it. It was Kevin. And that was, I think, got us even more geeked up. Like, yeah, Kevin. That was my favorite play Kevin made in his whole career. Was that out of his character to do something like, like that? Yes, completely out of his character. Kevin's been apologizing that ever since he did it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going into this game five. Uh, the temperature is hot. Uh, you guys are starting to get back. Now, the Garden, I always feel like the Garden's magical in the playoffs. And I know, obviously, it's a different building back then. But did you feel the same thing? And, and what do you think is that magic? And what is it that, that the crowd does that, that creates these unbelievable in, environments? Well, the Boston crowd is just, you know, it's just a fun crowd. I mean, they're really close in the old Boston Garden, so it feels like they're right on top of you. There's smoke up in the top balcony of the arena. And um, it just was an old-school gym, I mean, you know, a little bit like Fenway Park is. is uh, and, um, you know, L.A. was all glitz and Hollywood, and, you know, we were all about blue collar and, the crowd, the fans were kind of crazy and nuts. And I think there was a little bit of an intimidation factor about our crowd. Um, but the support, that, you know, they were always there and they were loud and they wanted us to beat LA in the worst way. Like we could not let LA come into our place and win. And that, that would have been bad. Like that happened in 1985. Yeah. Speaking of that, it's, we, you know how pivotal game five is. Do you guys, Talk about this game has to be won, or is it pretty much, hey, we know the deal here. We got to win. We're at home. It's game five. We got to get this thing done. Yeah, like I said, you know, the, the art, we knew these guys were great. And, um, like, we had to play great. It wasn't like we just got to go out and win and will our way to win. Like, we had to really lock in, um, make shots. Uh, you know, we had to play really well if we're going to beat this great Laker team. Going into this game, understanding it's a pivotal game five, like where was your confidence level at going into the game like this? Well, we've gotten past game three. Game three would set the tone for them. They beat us by 33 points out there. We came back, we won game four. And now coming home, we felt, okay, we knew we were in a battle. The Lakers were just as – I mean, they, and no one expected us to beat the Lakers because they were thought of, thought of us as the thoroughbreds and we were the Clydesdales. I just couldn't run with that team. Well – when Kevin uh, did what he did, I mean, obviously it was, a, it was a, change, a game changer. But more important than that, when we got back to Boston, we knew that if we could just hold on to game five, some way get hold on to game five, that it would be coming back if, if we couldn't do it in game six. 
And chances are that was going to happen. The Lakers, just they were just tough. And mentally, they were tough. They were a great team, a uh, great coach, all the players. But it was the greatest matchup coming back for the game seven because we knew after getting through game five, uh, I remember saying in game seven, as they were walking into the locker room, I goes, you won't get out of here alive because I'll start a ride in here before I let you get out of here with this championship. This is my chance. You know? So you know, all those things played into the sidebars really played into it. But now, seven, you guys remember at halftime just talking about the heat at all or anything you guys had to do differently? Did you realize that they even accused Red Auerbach of turning on the heat in the building? Now, Ray, when that, they didn't realize that we didn't have the fancy arena. The guard didn't have air conditioning like some of the other places. They didn't turn on the heat. The, the reality of it is it was just one of those hot, hot uh, uh, summer days that was, uh, it, it was in June. It was unbelievable. Uh, but I remember that I just remember fanning the guys and trying to keep them cool on the bench when they would come off. But, and it was, it was just unbelievable. I, you can't, you can't redo that mentally. It's, it's, it took you to another level. When you watch Larry Bird, do you think he's going to thrive in these type of, of environments, the, the heat, <laughs> the, the Lakers game five? The thing about Larry was that he, he saw things, every, everything that came along, he saw that as a challenge. He wasn't afraid of whether it was heat or whether it was cold. It doesn't matter. Larry was never going to allow himself to make an excuse for whatever came up. We can fast forward to the time when he, he uh, you know, his, hurt, or he was, his back was out later on, and he couldn't, you know, he couldn't succumb to that. So in a game five like this, it was hot as it could be. Larry was on fire. He was doing everything. He was not going to let the city of Boston down because he looked at it more than just the Celtics. He looked at this, this city is pulling for us like you won't believe. And we can't let them down. And so Larry was doing everything he can, including the leadership that he was showing, to make sure that we got, got out of there with a game uh, win. When you're going against the Lakers, what, what guy for you was your toughest matchup? The toughest person for me, I guess, was, uh, was Magic. You know, you know Magic uh, controlled a lot of things for the Lakers. Uh, Kareem was obviously the, the, uh, the silent killer, but... Ma uh, Magic was just the guy that just, he was orchestrated. He did everything. So I felt if we could get Magic riled a little bit and get him changed up a little bit, it would give us an advantage. So we were all keen on him. Uh, uh, you know, I remember game six after five going back out there and uh, I uh, threatened Larry to, uh, Magic to come off the floor because he and then got into it and said, if you step across this land, I'm going I'm to lay you out in the form. Well, you know what? <laughs> he didn't step across and I didn't have to. I didn't have to go down that route because it was all my guys that, you know, I had to, I couldn't, I could not, not do it after making that statement. So it was all trying to get inside of each other's head and, you know, and years have gone by and then we have a lot of respect for one another because we realized we live uh, doing a great time and play it doing a great time. Did you guys start to smell this championship and for Larry to beat the Lakers in this situation, did it, could you sense that it meant more to him because it was against magic and the Lakers? Well, without a doubt, he, he, the measurement of, of Larry and of Magic was each other. They always, they always said that. That's, that's what it was. But there was a lot more riding on it, too. You know, we were at the – coming to the close of our careers, we wanted to – you know, maybe you wouldn't get a chance to get back there. So we had a lot of things on the line. I knew that I won that championship, and my goal was to retire after 84, even though Red talked me out about coming back. But I wanted to retire, go out on, on top. I know uh, guys, uh, other guys who was in, in that series that knew that if we could pull this off, uh, it would be the biggest thing. But no one had more personally riding on it than Larry. Larry was determined to outdo Magic. And that was, that was a big part of it.